Welcome to iLecture Online, and here we have a very interesting example, something very practical. Here we have a magnetic field uh, that has a, a magnetic field strength of 2.0 teslas, and within that field we have a conductor loop that has a cross-sectional area of 2 square meters, and it's rotating in that magnetic field at 60 rotations, they should say rotations, there we go, rotations per second. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So here we have a magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field is equal to 2.0 teslas. And now we have a loop which is able to rotate on its axis. So let's say that this is the axis right here and the loop can rotate like this at some rotational speed omega. And now this omega in this case is 60 revolutions Per second. Now notice that revolutions per second is not a standard unit for omega, for rotational velocity, so we'll have to convert that to radians per second. So let's do that now. Multiply this times 2 pi radians per revolution. So, so this becomes 120 pi radians per second. So that's the standard unit. So always convert from revolutions to radians. All right, now what does that do? Well, as this loop is rotating, you can see that sometimes the magnetic field will go through the loop because it's the plane is perpendicular to the magnetic field. But as it rotates, then the area, the effective area becomes zero, then it becomes maximum again, zero, maximum zero. So as the loop is rotating, the flux through the loop is constantly changing. And a changing flux, of course, produces an EMF. Now, since the area of the loop is changing in a non-uniform way, we'll have to find a way to calculate the EMF. So, going back to our definition, the EMF induced is equal to minus the change in the flux over time. And of course, knowing that the flux can be calculated by multiplying the magnetic field strength times the area, we can write this as is equal to minus the change in the B field times the change in the area, and of course, we have to remember it's the effective area, it's the area that's perpendicular to the magnetic field, and so if the area, if the rotation causes the area to change, we have to take into account the cosine or the sine of the angle between them, all divided by the change in the time, however fast that is happening. Now in this case, the B field is not changing, and the area of the loop is not changing, it's actually the angle that is changing. The effective area, of course, is A times the cosine of the angle, but the actual size of the loop is not changing. It just appears to be changing because of the change in the angle. So we can say that this is equal to minus B times A times the change in the cosine of theta over delta T. Okay, now how do we calculate that? How do we calculate the delta cosine theta delta T? Well, actually, you can imagine that this is a continuously rotating object, and so instead of really talking about deltas, we need to make this into a derivative. So a better way to write this is to say this is equal to minus b times a times the derivative of the cosine of theta with respect to time. And so how do we do that? How do we find that? Okay, well, what's the derivative of the cosine? Well, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, and the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. So this can be written as minus b times a times the negative sine of theta times the derivative of the angle with respect to time. So times d theta dt. And the minus times the minus cancels out. And of course, what is the definition of d theta dt? Well, that is rotational velocity. That is omega. So this can be written as b times a times the sine of theta times omega, or this can be written as omega b a sine of theta. Okay, now this will have a constant portion to it and a varying portion to it. So the constant portion is the omega, however fast the loop is rotating, the strength of the B field, the area of the loop, and then the changing part is the sine of theta. If we were to chart that out, of course, we can see that the sine of theta looks like this. When the, um, theta is zero, sine of theta is zero. So this here is the sine of theta curve. 
And then if we multiply the sine of theta times omega b times a, then we can see that when this reaches a maximum, normally equal to 1 because the sine of uh, 90 degrees is 1. If we multiply the 1 times omega b times a, you can see that then if this is the maximum, omega b times a, that the current will, or the EMF will change like this, periodically, and then down like this, and then up like that, and up like that, and so forth. So that's how the EMF will constantly change. So the EMF will be positive one moment, negative the other moment, positive the other moment, negative the other moment as this loop is rotating. If we want to plug some numbers in there, we can then say that the EMF induced is equal to omega, which is 120 pi radians per second. We don't have to write the unit radians. Then we have the magnetic field, which is 2 teslas, 2.0 teslas. And then we have the area, which we said was 2 square meters, 2 meters squared. And that will give us the EMF induced, the voltage induced. So let's try that. So it's 120. Oh, and I can't forget the sine of theta because it's not a constant. It's a varying, it's a varying EMF. So 120 times pi times 4, and we get 1,508 volts. So that would be 1,508 volts times the sine of theta. So you can see that as this thing is rotating, the EMF induced will go all the way up to 1,508 volts, back to zero, to minus 1,508 volts to zero, 1,508 volts to zero. And guess what this is? This is actually an alternating voltage source, the kind of volts that we get out of our uh, outlets at home or in, at, uh, at school. Anytime we plug in an appliance, we get a voltage varying EMF, and you can then begin to see that there's a relationship between what we just saw here and how electricity is produced at the power plant. So in later examples, we'll begin to draw that closer and closer, the analogy between how current is produced and how voltage is produced here versus how we produce electricity in power plants. At any rate, again, to recap very quickly, to find the EMF induced is the changing of the flux over time because the loop is always rotating. The flux to the loop is constantly changing. It's changing like a sine function. And the maximum amount of voltage produced is equal to omega b times a. Omega is the speed at which it rotates. The faster it rotates, the higher the voltage that's being induced. The stronger the magnetic field, the higher the voltage is induced. And the larger the area of the loop, the more voltage is induced as well. And that's how you do a problem like that.